everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is geared mostly towards newer operators, but at the same time, some of you seasoned veterans might pick up a couple things from this one. Today, we're gonna talk about a trunk kit. What did I actually carry around in my car when I was operating full-time? And I do wanna clarify, uh, when I was operating full-time, I was with a large-scale dirt company. We had our own techs, so I was not expected to do anything from a mechanical standpoint that was super extreme on the machines. Essentially, if something broke, I was making a phone call. I was not expecting expected to wrench myself. Uh, we also had a truck that came out and did all of our fluid changes when it was time on the machine, so I wasn't expected to do full-on fluid changes. But at the same time, that still leaves you within the mornings. You've got to grease your machine, you got to check over your fluids, you've kind of got to do your basic daily checks as an operator. And so what I did is I threw together a trunk kit that made that really easy for me. So what I would do first thing in the morning is I would pull my car right up alongside my machine. I was always parking my machine, uh, bearing in mind that the next morning I wanted to be able to pull right up next to it because I got this handy dandy trunk kit. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the actual tote. This is my tote. Yes, I realize it's horrifically disgusting. It's been sitting in the shed for a while, but you can kind of see it's a decent sized tote, but it's not huge. I'm not going to stand here and hold that for the entire length of this video. But you can see it's a reasonable size tote. You can pick that up at Walmart, you can get them at Home Depot, and just a quick tip, depending on what time of the year you're watching this, if you hit up Home Depot or Lowe's right after Christmas, they generally have a giant sale on storage containers because everyone's putting all their shit away from Christmas. So you can pick these up for even cheaper. But get, your si get yourself a nice, nice tote. This is probably, I don't know, the interior of this one is probably about 14 or 16 inches by 24 inches roughly. And that gives us a lot of flexibility on what we can carry. So the first thing that every operator knows about is grease. I've got a whole box of grease in here. It fits comfortably. I'm not squeezing everything. My tubes aren't getting totally destroyed rolling around in the back of the car. It's just really nice and convenient to grab a grease tube right out of my box there. Super nice at the ready. Uh, generally, your employer is going to supply you with grease and you can get it by the case so that you don't have a bunch of tubes just rolling around because we've all been there where you go to get into your trunk and all of a sudden one of the grease caps came off and you have grease all over the place. It's a disaster. That's the most obvious, grease. The next thing I have, I actually have four of these jugs and they're all a little different. I was able to, and this is just an old oil container. That's all this is, is an old motor oil container. I have four of these. They're all a little bit different, but you could also label them. What I actually have in them, and I did do a good job of actually flushing the containers before I started changing the fluids that went in them. I have one for DEF, I have one for hydraulic oil, I have one for motor oil, and I have one for coolant. That's my four fluids. This is intended as a top off mechanism. This is not, oh my God, my machine had a giant leak and I've got to come out, you know, I've got to refill the machine with hydraulic oil, or I'm not going to do an oil change on a machine out of the trunk of my car. This is literally, I roll up on the job to a piece of equipment, whether it's the one I've been running, or perhaps I get shuffled over to a new one. It ends up being a half gallon low on oil of whatever type, or a, a little bit low on coolant. I can reach into my trunk kit right here and I can grab whichever container I need to. I can top off that fluid, throw this back in my trunk, and then at the end of the day, whether it's stopping by the hog house or stopping by the actual shop, I can refill those when it's convenient and I'm ready to top off more fluids. So it's really, really convenient having those at the ready in your car so that you're not driving back and forth up and down the job site every morning when you need to top off with fluids. So that's the next thing. Now, what goes hand in hand with that? Funnels. I have like three or four different sized funnels because as we all know, depending on the machine you get into, sometimes the fill neck is just a little difficult to reach. Uh, I would highly recommend that you take at least three separate funnels. Motor oil and hydraulic oil, okay. With the small quantity that's gonna get mixed in the funnel, not a big deal. When it comes to coolant, you don't want it mixing with oil. When it comes to DEF, you don't want it mixing with anything. So if I can give you one piece of advice in your trunk kit, carry at least one separate funnel. If you're gonna mix anything, carry at least one separate funnel for DEF. You cannot mix anything with DEF or you're gonna have major issues with your DEF system. So we've got our funnels, we've got our fluids, we've got our grease. Well, we've also got, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, I have an old rusty screwdriver 
Sorry, let me bang around a little bit here. This is my old rusty screwdriver that I actually picked up um, and found in the dirt. And what I use this for is for cleaning out around Zerk fittings. You can see this is not a huge driver. That's a pretty narrow head. And so I use this for getting in there and cleaning around the Zerk fittings if I can't get my grease gun to go on there and get a good clean attach point. Um, that's a really, really handy thing to have and it's a junk screwdriver. So I don't care if it gets all bombed out. I don't care if it gets trashed. If I got a pry at a rock that's jammed in there, who cares? It's a junk screwdriver, really handy. Next thing I've got, brake cleaner. I cannot tell you the number of times especially when you're dealing with a clogged zerk or something that you just need to be able to get in there and see so that you can get your grease gun attached up on it. Or this is really handy when your grease gun is just, you know, we've all been there. You've been using your grease gun for the last three or four weeks. You haven't had time to clean it up. It's totally covered in grease. It's a nightmare to deal with. Carry a couple bottles of these, a couple cans of this in there, and you can take five minutes and clean all your equipment off really nice and easy, super quick. Now you're back to being nice and tidy. I don't know about you guys, I get a little anal about not getting all messy, which is why I also carry nitrile gloves. Oh my gosh, these are such a lifesaver. Nitrile gloves, anytime I'm doing greasing, first thing in the morning before I check any of my fluids or anything, I throw on my nitrile gloves, and that way I don't have to get my princess operator hands all messy. These stay nice and clean. In fact, right now, because this whole trunk kit is covered in dust from being in the shed, uh, I should have had nitrile gloves on because now my hands are all dirty and I'm gonna be a priss about it later. So nitrile gloves, super, super handy. Pick them up super cheap on Amazon. You can get them all over the place. I highly recommend that for doing greasing especially, but we all know anytime you're messing with fluids, it's nice to have. That goes hand in hand with shop towels. Um, you can do either blue shop towels like this. You can get cheap paper towels from the supermarket or the uh, contractor that I used to work for actually gave us bags of old rags. And so about once a month, I would swing by the hog house and just, uh, I had a burlap sack that I would stuff full of rags uh, and I would carry that in my trunk. And that's kind of what I used to clean up my grease gun. It was what I used to check oil and, and everything like that. I would just have a rag every morning that I would use. And then when I was done with the rag, you toss it out. So super handy to have. Then I have just a very basic set of tools. So we've got a uh, flat, uh, I'm sorry, I can't even talk, Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. These are actually, Excuse me, pardon me, that was rude. Uh, these are actually what I use to work on equipment. These are my nicer ones. They're not all chipped to pieces like the old rust bucket one that we had for cleaning out Zerks. Don't use these for that. This is for actually, if you need to tighten up a pipe clamp or you need to tighten up a fitting really quick. Instead of having to call the tech out, you've got a basic set of tools. So I've got those. I have two crescent wrenches, you know, not huge, not enormous, because if it gets past this, I'm calling a tech. But this at least gives me the ability to tighten up some small stuff to get me through the day. And then I found it's really handy to have a decent size, again, not huge, I'm not a mechanic, but uh, having a decent size set of channel locks here, again, just for the quick fix to get you through the day or to keep you moving along until the tech can get out there to address the issue. And that's really it for the trunk kit outside of the heart of it, which is this guy right here, an electric grease gun. Um, they're expensive. There's no getting around it. Electric grease guns are expensive, but I will highly recommend if you are doing this full time as a career, invest the money in an electric grease gun, uh, you will never look back. It, yes, I understand it puckers the butthole right up when you start looking at price tags. I get it, guys. I bought this one on my own. It was not supplied by a company. I went through the pucker factor, but I can tell you, you ever grease a paddle wheel scraper, you will hate your life without one of these electric grease guns. Backhoes, believe it or not, there's a ton of Zerk fittings on backhoes. I hate my life. It's just, there's so many pieces of equipment. Excavators aren't too bad, believe it or not. Dozers really aren't bad at all. When you start getting into backhoes and scrapers and get an electric grease gun, you will thank me a thousand times over. And I will say you're welcome a thousand times over. It's that worth it. So that's it, that's my trunk kit. And so you can see, I can take these tools I can put them down in here. I can take my gloves and my towels. I can throw them down in there. And this whole thing, I can now carry around and I can throw this right in my trunk. 
And the beauty of the tote, I didn't really talk about why I have the tote. First of all, it's a lot more convenient to carry the tote than it is all these individual things. That's obvious. The other reason is we're dealing with hydraulic oil, grease, motor oil, coolant, all of these things, you know, even your deaf, you're gonna get deaf crystals. Like all of these things are going to be messy. And so by putting them all in a nice tote, I keep the inside of my trunk nice and clean. Unless you have some giant spill because you slipped as you're pulling the oil out or something, your trunk, your actual car is going to stay nice and clean. It's all contained to this tote. And then if you need to once or twice, maybe three times a season, pull this out, wipe it out really well, clean out your actual tote, you're back in business with really a really clean trunk kit and you don't have to start your day with your whole body covered in grease and oil, all of your stuff covered in grease and oil. You can keep it all nice and tidy and it really doesn't cost that much money. So that's it for today. As always, I hope this has been helpful and we'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.